Hey guys, how's it going? It is Douglas here, Drown Boy Cosplay, and today I'm going to be bringing you another unboxing. Today's package is coming to us from good old Jimmy Falco at Spook House Props. If you guys remember, I did an unboxing for a Halloween 2 mask and a jumpsuit uh, from Mr. Jimmy Falco sometime back, closer to December, and I have been wanting to get more pieces from him since then. I made a very bold statement in that video saying that Jimmy is going to be like the new J.C. Carter as far as uh, his order lists and how desirable his work is because of how good of an artist he is. I kind of threw that out there and since then I've been purchasing some items from Jimmy left and right working on different pieces and not too long after that I want to say maybe three months later I saw that Jimmy had done a Trick or Treat Studios Captain Kirk conversion. So I went ahead and worked something out with Jimmy and had a Kirk sent his way so that he could have it converted for me and we figured out payment plans everything else I paid him for it and from the time that the Kirk was sent his way to now I've been given no update pictures I have seen not only not my copy of the Kirk but I have not seen any pictures along the way and I'm someone who absolutely loves progress pics I like to see the mask evolve especially if it's converting um, there's just always been something very intriguing about it to me uh, just seeing pictures along the way, which is why I take pictures along the way whenever I'm working on stuff. Because I know people like to see the process and how much it changes with each step. Well, I have not seen any pictures of this whatsoever. Jimmy wanted to keep it a secret, he wanted to surprise me, and so here we are. I have never seen a picture of this mask, I have no idea what it looks like. I only know what his original one looked like, and kind of the look that I showed him that I'm interested in whenever it comes to Myers masks. Now, I do have a theory as to what's inside of this box, and when we open it, we'll see if it comes true or not, but we're gonna go ahead and get this bad boy open. I just wanted to let you guys know, I did want to wait to do this until I had another package come in. Not too long ago, I picked up a vintage Lamson, um, and I wanted to wait to do this in this unboxing, so it, I may do this as a two-part, and the Lamson will be in here as well, but I have no patience whatsoever. I cannot wait to see this thing any longer. My mail just came and I have to do a video on it right now because I want to see it because I'm very, very excited. Jimmy's been being a little tease to me and uh, homie don't play that. The current day of shooting is the 3rd of June. Uh, if this video is coming out later, it's because I decided to wait for the Lamson to come in so that I could throw it in this video and just do one big, really nice Halloween one unboxing. Anyways, enough bullshit. Let's go ahead and slice this bad bitch open. Instead of trying to get any peeks, I'm just going to carefully crack it open. It is now fully sliced open. Again, have not looked inside still. I'm very nervous, but very, very excited. This is, I think, the first time on this channel that you guys will get to see a fully 100% genuine reaction like this. I haven't had any time to look at the mask and find imperfections or uh, really look at it and just be super excited over it. This is my genuine first time ever seeing this product. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'll give you guys first look. No, just a bag. Set this box aside. Here we have uh, one of Jimmy's cards, the Spook House Props card. By the way guys, this camera's been acting kind of weird. It has an autofocus on it, which is great for vlogging and such, but it's currently the only camera I have for filming, and I noticed in my last video that it's kind of uh, fading in and out with its focus. It's like focusing on masks in the background because it does facial recognition, so I'm kind of fucked. Okay, let's take a look at this. I'm gonna reach in and pull it out. And I'll give you guys first look. Okay, I can see the back of it. Boy. Oh boy, that's really pretty. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous H1. That is fucking ridiculous. Wow, that is just really really nice okay guys so here we have it a very very nice h1 Myers as done by spook house props aka Jimmy Falco converted from a trick-or-treat studios Kirk and this piece is really nice 
It's got the shadowing in the right places. So I usually prefer a little bit more of a fleshy H1, but I decided because of how fleshy my H2 was that I would go with a whiter paint job on this one, have a bit more of a clean look to it, but with subtle weathering. Um, I showed him some different references from different other H1 masks, the qualities that I like. And I'm like, you know, I trust your instinct on this. Just go ahead, knock it out the best that you can. You know what I look for in an H1 and I believe in you. And the same thing with him sending this mask to me with no pictures prior. Uh, I'm like, you know, I trust you, Jimmy. You're a fantastic artist. I trust your intuition and I trust that you will know if I like this mask or not. And I was right to put my faith in him because he did not disappoint once again. This mask is done very, very well. And this is a, this is a bit cleaner one. I would almost hope for a little bit more weathering around like the cheekbone areas, just to really highlight the details. But then again, uh, that would be probably a bit more heavy than what we're actually looking for. A lot of what you're getting is lighting and very subtle weathering. And he did that very well. The glue lines looking good, looking like the sideburns got ripped right off of there. Uh, the hair looks a little bit like pushed down right now just from being in the bag, but that's okay. I'll style the hair up some and yeah. This piece is really, really nice. Well guys, I'm super excited about it. So now I have a Halloween 1 mask and a Halloween 2 mask by Mr. Jimmy Falco. My next steps, I guess, will be possibly getting a Halloween 4 mask or for sure I need to get a Halloween 2018 mask done by him. He does fantastic work on those. If you guys are looking to have any work done for any Halloween masks, um, I'd recommend Jimmy. He's a great dude. He does fantastic work. His prices are really, really fair and He's just an absolute joy to work with, and I fully recommend him. If you guys want to, you can go check him out. He actually just released a new sculpt, and it is a very, very, very nice Myers mask, and as well as Kirk, called the 1031. They are very awesome. They're a special edition. I was hoping to be able to get one of those for you guys so that I could review it, but as much as they're costing, it's just not in the cards for me at the moment. But this is a very, very nice H1. I won't wear it, it's just gonna be a display piece. And this is a piece that I'm very happy to have in my collection because it looks fantastic. Again, thank you, Jimmy, not only for working with me on this guy, but just doing a fantastic job, being a good dude, and being a great artist. We greatly appreciate it here in the community. And I only hope the best for you in the future as I get to see you grow as an artist because this work is phenomenal and I'll definitely have to keep getting pieces from you. Let's see if he signed it. He may have forgot to sign it. Okay, he did not. Let's see, to Douglas, Halloween 78, Spook House Props, and he signed it 2019. Awesome, so it's even personalized there on the inside. I'll get you guys some shots of that whenever I'm taking some up-close video. Another thing is that this H1 is done like a Tots Kirk, so it will fit me if I ever had the desire to wear it for any reason. I could, I probably won't, but still very, very nice. Well, just here a little plug for Jimmy in case you guys want to go check him out, show him some love, maybe drop him a follow, or maybe contact him and get your own piece. He is going to be Spook House Props. You can find him on Instagram here. And his name is Jimmy Falco if you choose to contact him on Facebook. And I will put his email on screen right now as well in case you choose to go that route. Love you guys. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. And tell me guys, what is your favorite Halloween 1 sculpt? Out of any of the Meyer sculpts in the mask community, what is the piece to you that just screams perfect H1? Because I know everybody's got one, and I feel like I'm going to get a lot of the same answers here, but maybe not. I've heard varying answers from a lot of different people, and it really is up to personal taste. So being that as it is, if you will, comment, let me know which one is your favorite, and if you have any reasons as to why, also drop that. Love you all. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a fantastic day, and just remember, Halloween is every day. Hey guys, coming back at you, it's Douglas here at Drown Boy Cosplay. I have the second part of this unboxing ready to go. It actually came in the next day. I have my vintage Lamson knife here, and I'm ready to open it. So, one thing that's uh, particularly worrisome, uh, just to start things off, is the blade is actually sticking through the top here just a little bit. Seems, uh, seems a little bit dangerous for post office workers, especially my post office ladies. They love me. We're really good friends. Damn, I feel like I need a knife to open this knife. Wait a minute, I think the seller actually told me to have a knife on hand. So, I'll just grab this Halloween scalpel right here. 
the inside it is wrapped in that bubble wrap very well. I guess I'm just going to slit across that. There we go. Wow. So this is my first time holding a Lamson of any sort, whether it be a vintage or not. Got a 1970s Lamson here. Very, very cool looking. It's a very big knife. I can see why people like <laughs> Myers' knife. It's a very large kitchen knife. Very intimidating and uh, feels good to hold. So if you guys don't know, the 1970s Lamson was the knife supposedly used in the original Halloween film. Uh, I believe there's been a little bit of debate over years whether it was a Dexter knife or a case knife. It seems these days most people are saying that it's a case knife, but the most iconic is the Lamson. This is what is known to be used in the movie. This is what collectors have been having for years. And regardless of which knife it truly is, which I think there's no real clarity on that, um, this is for sure like the look. Now one thing that Siller did warn me about is that it has a little bit of wear on it. And I'm like, oh, that's great. It'll look natural, like really natural weathering because it is natural weathering. Um, but seriously, it looks aged to perfection. It's just very, very nice. Feels pretty sharp as well. I'm gonna not slide my hand along the blade too much. Because as we all know, I'm prone to cutting myself in these videos. But yeah, overall, just a very, very gorgeous knife. Very intimidating. And I think it'll look great set up next to my Halloween stuff. I just need to find a stand for it and then we'll be off to the races. Alright guys, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and insert all the cinematics of the mask. Possibly some worn shots and of course, shots of the knife with the mask and maybe with the worn shots too. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and remember, you don't know what death is. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left. No reason, no uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of, of good or evil, right or wrong. I spent eight years trying to reach him, and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil.
I think he'll come back. I'm gonna wait for him. I still think I should notify the radio and television. No. If you do that, they'll see him on every street corner. They'll look for him in every house. Just tell your men to keep their mouths shut and their eyes open. 